You're listening to High Frequency Healing on the Super Power Up Podcast, the show that explores the awakening of superpowers through higher dimensional healing. Hello, this is Angela Maria, one of the Super Power Up hosts, and you are listening to High Frequency Healing Show. The only difference between where you are to where you want to be is the actions you take here and now to heal your life. I am so excited to interview Bruce Feldhusen today about using intuitive thought in the healing process. Here are just some, for few, some more few things about him. This wise old soul brings a lifetime of experiences to his passion of helping with the healing of souls through divine guidance. Bruce believes growth and change are inevitable, positive and divinely guided. Bruce is passionate about his core values of love, spirituality, and integrity, and also using his gifts to serve humanity, fulfilling his destiny, and living an authentic life. He also loves to help animals and their caretakers. Please join me to welcome Bruce Felhinsen. Hello, Bruce. Greetings. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm so happy to have you here. I have the pleasure to meet you in person. We had some sessions together, and it's an honor to have you in this program today. Thank you. Let's start asking you, what's your healing superpower? I... I can sit with a person and in a very short amount of time, I can see who they really are. I see past the physical, I see past the masks, and I can, I can see who a person really is. The, the old soul, the warrior, the old healer, the philosopher, the scholar, I, I see who they really are. Bruce, would you please take us back to your early years and name one memorable life lesson that is useful for you today in this path? Well, that's, that's a good question. Um, I spent probably the first 55 years of my life being angry, depressed, mostly living alone, unhappy, even suicidal. Um, so I can relate to people, you know, that are in that place very, very easily and, uh, and see who they are, see what's under all of that. Mm -hmm. And what was this um, experience that you had before that you really value right now that has been like a life lesson for you? Well, one is that uh, I don't want to live my life that way anymore. Um, I, I'm here for a reason. I have a purpose. I have a mission. And uh, I discovered that a few years ago, and that, that completely changed everything. Um, I have no regrets about what, uh, what all happened in my past. Um, because it's, uh, it's a big part of who I am today. Um, it's a reminder to keep going forward, to, to reach out to people, to respond to people, especially if they're in that place themselves. Yeah, and, and, and that's what I, I love about your story and your path, because you were able to go through that dark period of time and being able to see light and create light. And that's why we have now the honor and the blessing to be sharing this new world with you, thanks to that experience that you had in the past. Agreed. Agreed. Um, I don't know what else to say about that. It's, uh, it's one thing that I keep... Uh, thinking about these days is gratitude. Gratitude is very important, very, very powerful. 
And I know a lot of people have a hard time being grateful for an experience such as that. Um, you know, they, they look at their own lives, they live as victims, they live in poverty, they live in fear, um, as I did. And it's, uh, it's very hard to be grateful for all that. But it is definitely part of who you are. And looking forward, you can, you can now look back on that from a place of love and gratitude. Thank you. Thank you so much for that piece, Bruce. I always talk to the people that I have the blessing to walk with, and that's the best um, key to be able to transform our lives is gratitude and being grateful for those moments, being grateful for the sadness, being grateful for feeling frustrated and lost in life is what really creates a different space of healing inside us that can really create something else out there, exactly as the experience that you have had in your life. So before we go to break, Bruce, and we keep on talking about all of these topics that I really love and go deep into the intuition, where can people go to find out more about you? Uh, I have a website called Searching for Purpose. It's at www.searchingforpurpose.net. And there's some more information on there. You can book sessions. You can uh, read a little bit more about my story. There's some information about Reiki there. I'm also a Reiki master and energy healer. Um, yeah. Perfect. So we've been talking with Bruce Felhusen about using intuitive thought in the healing process. And when we come back from this short break, we are going to talk more about his healing superpowers. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you here to change the world? Do you talk about things like vibration, frequency, awakening, and consciousness? Are you pretty sure you have superpowers? The Superpower Net is unlike normal coaching programs and conscious communities. We provide training, intuitive guidance, peer-to-peer -peer learning, intensive one-on-one -on -one coaching, and a high vibrational network of people just like you. When you join the Net, you get 24-7 access to a collaborative group of people who support you as you master your personal power and unlock your superpowers. If you are ready to use your superpowers to change the world, then join the Superpower Net today. Visit superpowerexperts.com slash the net to learn more. We're back. You are listening to High Frequency Healing. And today we are talking with Bruce about using intuitive thought in the healing process. Before break, we were talking about your uh, experience as a Reiki master, but I know a little bit more about you. So share with us, Bruce, what did you study to be? I'm sorry, what did I, what did I decide to be? Yes, what did you study to be? What's your career, your profession? I spent... Uh, 33 years in a very, very technical career working with um, the computer systems that run uh, large buildings, hospitals, research facilities, that sort of thing. Very, very technical. Not at all like what I do now. And what was that burning bush, that moment that made your heart desire changing this career? I was uh, working the last job. This was about a year and a half ago. And it was a very, very difficult place to work. Um, I was very good at what I did, very passionate at what I did, very passionate about it. Um, thoroughly enjoyed the work, but it was be becoming more and more difficult to work with um, managers, especially managers that had egos. I don't respond well to that sort of thing. Um, I basically got to the point a year and a half ago where it was like, if I stay here, I'm going to, I'm basically going to shoot myself. And I just decided literally on a moment's notice that I, that I was done. I was miserable. I was depressed. I was angry. I was all the things that I used to be again. And, uh, 
I just decided that I was going to make a decision, walk away. I had no idea what I was walking towards, but I made the decision to walk away. I had bills. I had debts just like everybody else. Um, I had had a small idea in my head that I would work on motorcycles, uh, which I do at the moment. Um, working on motorcycles is, is paying the bills at the moment, and it's going pretty well. It's been a huge, huge lesson in faith, trust, and belief. Um, I've been shown personally that if you have faith and trust and belief both in yourself in others and in the universe it's going to turn out better than okay it's going to turn out amazing so a few months after i did all that i uh, found myself looking at a course catalog for a local school here um, called southwest institute of healing arts not something i would I've normally found myself doing a few years ago, but I, here I am, I'm looking at the course catalog and a course literally just jumped out of the page at me. And uh, so I made an appointment, went down there and signed up for a co course called uh, Intuitive Angel Guide. It was the uh, inaugural course, the first one they ever had. And uh, it turned out to be uh, just an absolutely amazing experience. Every weekend was a new discovery of, um, of a connection, of a ability, of something just absolutely amazing. Bruce, when you get to the point where you say, okay, I don't want this anymore, and you start just looking in that catalog, and you choose to to do this uh, program about angels. What was that process when we talk about intuition? How do you know that was for you? How do you know that your being was asking you to take that curse and just take that new path in your life? Well, um, quite simply, um, Oh, you've heard all kinds of expressions like getting hit by a thunderbolt and, you know, that sort of thing. But quite simply, uh, I'm getting all choked up right now just thinking about it again. But quite simply, I read the title of that course and uh, just literally had, just broke down crying. It was that powerful. Whoa. And that's what I ask you, Bruce, because I am sure that... A lot of people who are listening to us right now, and they just got into this title using intuitive thought in the healing process, they may be asking uh, intuitive, how do you feel? How do you know? And you just said one of the many ways we can get those kind of answers is through our body. You can, you, you can have those different uh, emotions and feelings, heat, cold, uh, sweating, when you are with a client, how do you use that intuitive thought to help them heal? So when I sit with a client, um, I get pictures. I'm very visual. I get a lot of pictures. Um, I can see other energetic beings around them and sometimes uh, they will identify themselves to me, sometimes not. Um, I get, I get, uh, I guess I would call it a message sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, and it's, all this stuff is very, very subtle. You know, I'll be, I'll be chatting with somebody, having a conversation about what's going on in their life. And all of a sudden I see them, um, you know, dressed as someone might dress around the time of Cleopatra or, uh, you know, as a Tibetan monk or a warrior or something like that. I get a picture of them. Um, so what I'm seeing is a past life. Um, and the messages might come through as, um, you know, there's been a loss. And sometimes I even feel that loss. Um, 
it's it's pretty subtle. It's completely different with each client. That is another amazing thing about this work is there's no two experiences are alike in any way, shape, or form. Um, I feel I feel people's uh, pain come through sometimes. Um, I can be working with them, especially when I'm doing the energy work or the Reiki, and all of a sudden I'll get a pain somewhere, and I'm like, is that me? No, I think it's them. Um, so I get pictures, I get messages, um, I get feelings, I get emotions. Um, lots of subtle little things come through. And, and then the intuition part basically is, well, sometimes before a client even shows up, I just start to get an intuition about, oh, who knows, um, you know, a loss or self-worth or um, they're really struggling with uh, the um, something. It, sometimes it comes through, you know, even in the morning before they show up. Bruce, this is very interesting. And how do you define intuition? What's intuition for you? Intuition is these very, very subtle feelings, thoughts, uh, the, the uh, pictures or visions that come through. To, to me, um, Sometimes I even hear sounds. You know, I've actually heard my name spoken a few times, especially in meditation, and I know nobody's in the room. Mm -hmm. So intuition can come through in many forms, visual. Uh, it can be clairvoyance. You, you, might, uh, you might actually have a feeling about something that's going to happen down the road, you know, in the future. Um, it's all very subtle. You have to kind of get quiet and pay attention. But uh, pictures, messages, sounds, feelings, you know, the, uh, just, the, just, just the feeling that you, you know something is coming, that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. Bruce, I remember one of our sessions together. Uh, you were just doing uh, Reiki to me, and I remember you felt something and you just move your hands and I start feeling really cold and a lot of other um, reactions you were having in your body. Could you share with us how is that healing process that takes place when you are with the person right there in front of you and you start feeling all of this intuition, those feelings, those emotions or sounds and what is the kind of healing process that takes place right there? Because remember, all of this is pretty new for most of the world, and they are used just to go to the doctor, get pills, go to the psychiatrist or psychologist, and, which is perfectly fine, and I think that at some point that's what we need. But nowadays, uh, we know, and you know, and I know because we've been there, you can really heal your life, your body, your energy, your thoughts and your healings, um, your feelings and your emotions just when you get that intuition and when you are really getting in contact to that information. So once you have all of these emotions and feelings and you receive the message, what is that healing process there? Could you just explain in some words if, if possible? So I agree with you. We have the ability to heal ourselves. And we are also uh, energy. And so what basically I and my guides do and the guides that show up for the client do is we all work with energy. And energy can have varying uh, frequencies. It can, be, it can be light. It can be sound. Um, so, basically, what, what I'm doing is working with guides, working with energy of varying vibrations, um, 
a lot of times I see light. Again, I'm very visual, so I'll see uh, I'll see green healing light come in, or I'll see a golden uh, diamond light come in. Um, I see. Uh, I've actually witnessed a couple of psychic surgeries on a few of my clients. That was very interesting to watch. Um, my when I first learned how to do the energy healing, it was very interesting because somebody was asking me what I was doing with my hands. And I'm like, I don't know. They're just going where they need to go. And this is, uh, again, this is part of the guidance that you receive. In, mm -hmm. in one very, very real sense, um, I myself as the practitioner am a conduit. I am a conduit for the energy and for the guides and so on and so forth. Um, I bring my guides with me and the client brings their guides with them. Um, and I bring certain abilities and, you know, that, you know, guidance and that sort of thing comes through me also. It's a team effort, really. It's mm -hmm. a team effort between the client, between myself as the practitioner, between their guides, between my guides. Um, and it's all done through energy and uh, high frequency vibration it's this is all of a very very high frequency vibration light is a vibration but of a very high frequency um, and the and this energy is is applied and focused in um, a way that will promote healing in um, in the client And that's, I think, about it. Yes, I, I, I love exactly what you said, because that has been also my experience. Uh, we are now the healers. When people open their energy field, when people say, okay, I want to have a therapy, I want to have a session, they are giving us permission to enter into those energy fields. And that's when the intuitive um, power this power of intuition of letting us being just a channel to be the conduit of that healing energy takes place in those bodies. And I remember in one of your sessions, I think that was like the third one that, um, and I, I guess that I shared this with you after you left, I was super tired. I had like two more appointments and I had to cancel them. I was super tired. I wanted to sleep. And I realized that I needed that time. So that energy that you were moving through my body was able just to settle, sit down and just do the job that it has to do in my body. And I, next day I was more clear about the next step and the actions that I needed to take. So I love the way that you explain it. I think it was really clear for all of that people out there that is thinking using intuitive thought in the healing process are you healing just through intuition yes we are just channels of energy and before this bruce you were talking that we are not healers we're just a channel and i i completely agree with you so how do you guide people to empower themselves to start this healing process because not, be, not everybody has the time or the opportunity to go and look for someone like you. There are places where it's just they, they don't know where to go. So how they can start just doing um, this process to themselves? The first thing that I would say is for, for anybody to realize how powerful they really are. Most of the people on this planet, a good share of the people on this planet, have no idea how powerful they are. We have the power not only to heal ourselves, but to change our lives in any way that you would want to change your life. Just the, the power of our thoughts, the power of our emotions, people don't... Uh, I don't think they really realize that. So what I basically do is sit with a client and I, I start to get a pretty good sense of who they are. So I start to show them who they are. 
And the more they learn about themselves, the more they start to understand who they really are. They're not this, this body that's walking around on earth that has these physical and emotional and mental scars. That's not who they really are. There is a soul, a very powerful soul underneath all of that. Yeah, and, 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 and that's, that's what I start to bring out. Yes, and I think that's crucial. When they start to to start to be, actually believe in that through, um, you know, some small steps. Sometimes people take pretty large steps too, but a lot of a lot of times it's by smaller baby steps. Um, their belief, their faith, trust, and belief will start to grow. Thank you. That's the key for our success. Our success as professionals, parents, uh, healers, being able to realize, to feel really inside our core how powerful we are. We are the creators of our reality. Bruce, I really would like if you can share with us two or three steps or tips for anyone to begin this process of connecting to their intuition so they can really start their healing process. So I would, I would uh, say start meditating. Um, and I know it's very difficult to start. The mind will not be quiet. And in all reality, I don't think you want the mind to be quiet. Trying to quiet the mind, I think, is a futile exercise. If you can, what works for me is I focus my mind on my breathing. And while my mind is literally watching me breathe, then the, the real meditation work begins and the messages start coming through. And I can ask Archangel Michael, for instance, you know, to give me a hand with something. Um, so I would say start by meditating and then start by paying attention to these small, the small voices, the small visions, the dreams that, uh, maybe don't make sense to you. A lot of stuff comes through dreams, especially waking dreams. I have some pretty amazing waking dreams um, where they're showing me who I am and what I'm going to be doing. Um, it's, it's somehow figure out how to be quiet, make some time for yourself in a quiet space, and just start paying attention to what what comes through. You may be, and it's, in another way it can kind of work, you can be sitting with somebody in a coffee shop, for instance, and somebody will say something to you about a seminar. And uh, maybe that's a message from spirit that maybe you should go to this seminar. Um, it, it can come through in many, many, many ways. Thank you. And I just want to say it again for Everybody who is with us, take notes and really don't believe anything Bruce or I am saying, just verify, meditate. And I love the way you explain it. It's just breathing so my mind can watch me breathing. That's when the real meditation happens. And be alert to small voices, to those waking dreams, to messages that come to you, through people, uh, billboards, songs, and being silenced is going to allow you to get in contact to those messages. Bruce, if we really practice this as a daily routine, I can guarantee, and I think you can do this too, that their energy vibration is gonna change. And when we change our energy vibration, the healing process starts by itself inside us. I agree. Something, something very important for the healing process is to 
let go. This was an important thing that I picked up on. Um, there's a very, very good book out there called Letting Go by Dr. Stephen Hawkins. And uh, reading that book made a big difference for me because he, he, he basically talks about letting go of all these things that don't serve you. Letting go of the hurts of the past, letting go of, you know, all these things, things that happened to you at work, things that your parents did when you were a child, things that happened to you when you're driving your car down the freeway. Just let all these things go. They don't serve you. And it can be as simple, simply as when they come up, you, you just don't engage with them. You just let them come up and let them pass. Another very important process in healing, I believe, is forgiveness. If you're carrying around a lot of anger or uh, you know, animosity towards somebody, you're only really hurting yourself. Um, and I've also come to discover that there is something even more powerful than forgiveness, and that is understanding. If you can understand, for instance, why your your mother raised you the way she did and left you with all kinds of problems, if you can understand what happened to her in her childhood and have compassion for what happened for her you know, in, in her childhood, it completely changes how you feel about it. This is actually a process I went through with my mother. Um, I have nothing but love and compassion for for her and for what she went through in, in her childhood and her life. And uh, you know, as a result, we have this great relationship now. So I really appreciate those words and those tips, those steps for everyone who's listening to start embracing, practicing, following right now. It doesn't matter how you really approach this, but having that disposition, opening your body, opening your energy fields, and just put that intention, I want to start my healing process through my intuition, and just follow all of this, meditate, breathe, uh, be alert, let go, and forgive, just do it. And I am pretty sure you're going to feel a certain shift that could be really big, could be small, but is going to be, is going to have a big impact in all your life. Bruce, please remind our listeners where they can go to find out more about you again before we finish this nice conversation. I am at www.searchingforpurpose.com, or a .net, I apologize. It is a .net. All the information you need is right there, my phone number, there's an email, contact me, lots of information there. Perfect. Thank you so much, Bruce, for sharing your healing superpower with us today. Thank you, Angela. It has been a pleasure. And thank you, all of you, for listening. I am Angela Maria, Conscious Creation. Change actions, shift energy to live heaven down here on earth. I see you next time. Ciao. Are you ready to discover your superpowers? Go now to superpowerexperts.com and take the superpower quiz today.